Hi everyone, so welcome to one more fantastic 5 MCQs discussion for upcoming NEET PG bar FMG. Myself Dr. Bharat and uh, so please subscribe to the channel for more updates. Let's start without delay the first MCQ. So let us start with the first MCQ. Drug acting via tyrosine kinase receptor is. So this is frequently tested. Option C A adrenaline. Option B thyroxin. Option C insulin and option D diazepam. So can you guess the answer? If you are telling C insulin, then you are right. So remember tyrosine kinase, the receptor is activated by insulin. Then there is growth factors like insulin growth factor one, insulin like growth factor one, and any growth factors leading to cancers like epidermal growth factor right and then vascular endothelial growth factor all of them act through tyrosine kinase receptor repeatedly tested another important thing is what about growth hormone don't confuse growth hormone with growth factor growth hormone and prolactin they act through jack stat pathway jack stat receptor okay jack stat so tyrosine kinase is growth factor and growth hormone is through jack stat so don't confuse that now what about other options adrenaline acts through alpha and beta and alpha and beta are g protein coupled receptor what about thyroxine thyroxine belongs to nuclear receptor superfamily and diazepam acts through gaba a and gaba a is ion channel receptor so it acts through ion channel receptor so what are we going to learn from this mcq what are the types of receptor so receptors can be two types which are present on cell membrane or which are present inside the cell inside the cell so inside the cell we call them as nuclear receptor superfamily superfamily and what we have in that corticosteroids like mineral corticoid and corticoid then we have sex steroids like progesterone estrogen and testosterone then two vitamins vitamin a and one more vitamin you have to tell me in the comment section then the hormone thyroxine then we have ppar so all these are nuclear receptor superfamily and please remember these are the slowest acting receptors on the cell membrane we have G protein coupled receptor then we have ion channel receptor so ion channels we have nicotinic we have nicotinic then we have serotonin that is 5ht3 and then we have GABA A and then we have glutamate so in glutamate we have two types NMDA and AMPA then we have tyrosine kinase just now i told you the examples and the one which acts through jack stat so if you know the examples of nuclear receptor ion channel receptor tyrosine kinase jack stat all the remaining will be g protein couple receptors now coming back to the question they are asking tyrosine kinase receptor the activation is done by insulin insulin growth factor or growth factors so that is the answer for this question Moving on to the second MCQ, a patient is on lithium therapy, developed hypertension, he was put on thiazides. So you know lithium is mainly used to manage two conditions and what are those? Mania and bipolar disorder. So this patient is having hypertension, to manage hypertension he was put on thiazides. Okay. So he was put on hypertension, after a few days he developed coarse tremors, tinnitus, ringing sensation in the ear and diarrhea. Lithium levels were raised, he explained the likely mechanism of interaction. So they are asking patient is already on lithium and he was added thiazides and then after that the lithium levels increased and because of that patient developed coarse tremors, tinnitus and diarrhea. So what is the reason for that? So please read the options and tell the answers okay so we'll come to the answer later 
what about thiazides thiazides or loop diuretics when you use them what they do they are known to produce hyponatremia they decrease sodium in the circulation that is hyponatremia so what happens whenever there is hyponatremia this is the nephron whenever there is hyponatremia so kidney tries to reabsorb sodium more and more in the pct but in the body sodium is handled similar to lithium and sodium are handled similar so if sodium is reabsorbed along with that lithium is also reabsorbed so sodium and lithium both are reabsorbed back because body will handle lithium similar to sodium so when the lithium is reabsorbed back there is increase in lithium level and that is going to cause lithium overdose or toxicity why because lithium is having narrow therapeutic index a minor increase in the levels can lead to toxicity you know that then the safer range is between 0.5 to 1.5 milli equivalent per liter and if it is more than 1.5 milli equivalent per liter we call it as toxicity and how do you know toxicity patient will have coarse tremors the tremors will become coarse he will have seizures he will have diarrhea and tinnitus these symptoms are present how do you identify in the exam tremors if fine tremors are given then remember fine tremors means dose is fine if they are given coarse tremors then dose is not fine dose is increased so this is how you can find out in the question and see whether there is lithium normal dose or over dose so coming back why did the lithium level go up number one option thiazide inhibits the metabolism of lithium false thiazide acts an add on drug to lithium false because thiazide have nothing to do with uh, cns activity thiazide increases the tubular reabsorption of lithium true this is the understanding all of the above no false so the answer for this question is thiazides so please remember one more thing anything which is going to lead to hyponatremia can lead to lithium toxicity so when we can see hyponatremia if the patient is having nausea vomiting severely or patient is having diarrhea or patient is having fasting so remember a patient on lithium has all this so he may end up with lithium toxicity so please read that carefully so coming back the answer is c this is the interaction frequently tested coming to the third mcq which of the following drug dose is required which of the following drugs dose is required to reduce to 1/4 of the original dose when given with allopurinol so the options are 6 mercaptopurin actinomycin d mitomycin c and aspartic acid now try to answer this question the answer is the option a 6 mercaptopurin itself is telling you it's a purine analog so it is a purine antagonist used as anti cancer drug purine antagonist that is called 6 mercaptopurin now why do we give allopurinol let me tell you now whenever we treat a cancer so there is something called tumor lysis syndrome so tumor lysis syndrome where you see lysis of tumor so purine is broken down and you see more and more of uric acid so hyperuricemia will be seen to avoid that what we do is when we give anti cancer drug we give allopurinol so allopurinol is a drug which can stop the production of uric acid by inhibiting xanthine oxidase and that is why when we give anti cancer drug we add allopurinol to avoid hyperuricemia in tumor lysis syndrome point number 1 point number 2 here the patient is started on 6 mercaptopurin an anti cancer drug so when you are adding this 6 mercaptopurin with allopurinol so should i keep the mercaptopurin level normal increase the dose or decrease the dose let us analyze 6 mercaptopurin is a purine it is also metabolized by xanthine oxidase and made inactive so normally if i give 6 mercaptopurin it becomes inactive by xanthine oxidase we all know it but if i am adding allopurinol to prevent tumor lysis syndrome what happens 
this will inhibit xanthine oxidase then what happens to 6 mer captopin level try to guess the levels goes up now what happens if 6 mer captopin level goes up toxicity so to avoid that whenever we combine these two what we do is we reduce the dose of 6 mercaptopurin by one fourth of its original dose so the toxicity doesn't occur so that is the logic here so whenever you give this together you have to decrease the dose of 6 mercaptopurin to avoid the toxicity of 6 mercaptopurin so the answer is A now actinomycin uh, mitomycin 3 are also anti-cancer drug so you have to tell me in the answer section where are we using mitomycin C it is used in ENT practice it is used in ophthal tell me where we use it topically so please answer that and L asparaginase is an anti-cancer drug it's an enzyme used as anti-cancer drug so please answer these questions moving on to another question 22 year old male patient had injury from a plant to his eyes after a few days he developed fungal corneal ulcer so there was a fungal corneal ulcer he was given antifungal drugs yes obviously fungal corneal ulcer you have to give antifungal drug pain will be there so oral analgesics the ophthalmologist wanted to add atropin as adjunctive therapy the reason is now what is atropin first of all let us analyze before we come to the answer so you can pause the video and try to answer it atropin is considered as passive midriatic so it's a midriatic drug passive midriatic not only that it is a cycloplegic drug cycloplegic so what happens it causes paralysis of accommodation paralysis of accommodation means they relax the ciliary muscle they relax ciliary muscle okay sir correct so when you use atropin it causes dilation of pupil and it will relax the ciliary muscle so what happens in fungal corneal ulcer corneal ulcer so it's a painful condition so there will be ciliary spasm ciliary muscle spasm so the ciliary muscle spasm is going to cause pain now why are we adding atropin because it will relax the ciliary muscle and reduces the pain that is the reason we use atropin in fungal corneal ulcer so let us read the options to decrease lacrimation no it will not do decrease pupil size no it increase the pupil size to prevent cyanic and relieve the pain it will relieve the pain correct and prevent cyanic correct to cause ciliary muscle spasm no it will not cause spasm to relax so it will prevent the adhesion and also it will relieve the pain by causing ciliary muscle relaxation so that is why we use it in case of fungal corneal ulcer i hope you got the answer for this now what you have to tell me here is which is the shortest acting passive midriatic passive midriatic and the second question is which is the longest acting passive midriatic that is the second question for you and tell me can we use midriatic in a patient with angle closure glaucoma so try to answer these three questions so first one tell me the shortest acting passive midriatic second one longest acting passive midriatic can we give midriatic in angle closure glaucoma please answer these things coming to the last question a female developed pain and insect crawling sensation at legs at night which is relieved by shaking her legs so what is that sensation and shaking the legs this is called restless leg syndrome which of the following is the drug of choice for this condition can you guess yes if you are telling gabapentin then you are right nowadays gabapentin or pregabalin are the drug of choice for uh, restless leg syndrome if they are not there in the option then we can give d2 agonist which are non-ergots what are the non-ergot d2 agonist we can use the names are pramipexol ropinorol and rotigotin so these are non-ergot d2 agonist these are also 
used in restless lug syndrome but they are not a drug of choice they are also used for one more condition that is parkinson disease okay then prandipexol is a second line vitamin b12 iron they are just a additional drugs but these are the drug of choice so what you want to what what you need to tell me is where do we use gabapentin pregabalin apart from this restless leg syndrome i'll give a clue they are used for some neuropathic pain so which neuropathic pain are we using these drugs so please tell me in the comment section so with that we are done with the fantastic five mcqs so if you like the content like the video share to your friends subscribe to the channel and uh, in doubt you can log in here and ask me thank you take care